Uh, hey, this is Nick Granville. I um, haven't done a lesson for a while on YouTube. I've just been so flat out with gigs and teaching and all the kind of stuff that I'm doing. Um, but I thought what I'd look at is some jazz fusion stuff. So let's get right into it. Now I borrowed from the kind of shred rockers how they kind of play, um, how they sweep stuff. And w there's two ways I'll use this. The first one I use it is like this. So what I'm doing is I'm starting with a note here. So I'm in B. And I'm, I'm kind of rolling my pick across it. So I use that quite a bit and that's kind of a real subtle thing. And that works really really well as something that you can use in a jazz fusion context. The other one that I use quite a bit is I will play um, up various arpeggios. So if I have um, an e, if I'm in the key of B flat, it'll be E flat. Right, that's a relative in the key. It might be F minor. I might play something like that. Those those arpeggios, but I'll sweep through them with my pick. And almost always I end on a bend because it's nice to come out with something kind of high at the end of it. Yeah, the next thing I'm going to talk about is bending notes. I like to bend notes. I mean, for me, that's one of the unique things of the guitar is that we can bend notes. So why not use it? You know, when I started learning about jazz, a lot of people told me, you know, you, you can't bend notes. You shouldn't bend notes in jazz. Well, why not? Um, horn players do it, why can't guitar players? Now there's a way to do it make it sound more like a jazz player and a way to do it, you know, Wes Montgomery occasionally slightly bent notes. That's a different thing. But if I'm playing in a jazz fusion context then anything goes as far as I'm concerned. So I'll use bends often and there's two kind of main bends I'll use. I'll use bends like this. Now your thumb has to come up to support it. You don't want it to go over but you kind of want it up. So I'll do things like that, you know, which is essentially just pentatonic, but I'm kind of borrowing it from how rock players would bend. But what I'll do with it is I'll put some more jazz type harmony with it. So it might be something like. Sometimes I'll do that as well. Just where I hit a note and then I kind of slide up to a high bend or stuff like that. And again, that's coming from rock players. It's not really something I hear jazz guitarists do, but I really like using that kind of stuff. The other one I do that I hear pretty much exclusively in rock, but I like to use it in a jazz fusion context is unison bends. Thing is, if you've got a guitar with a whammy bar, uh, with a with a floating bridge like this, unison bends are always going to be slightly out of tune. You can't do anything about it. One note's trying to stay where it is, and the other one's bending up, pushing that note out. It's just one of those things you have to adjust to. So I'll use unison bends like that, and they're they're a lot of fun because they just have this kind of gnarly sound that, that like I said, comes from rock. Another one that I use is, is double stops, and I've talked about this before in other lessons, but double stops for me is something I kind of heard, you know, the classic Chuck Berry. You know, from Johnny B. Good or whatever, but um, I'll use those in a jazz context. So it might be something like we're playing in B, B flat minor. stops create an interesting sound because it's kind of like harmonizing a part but it it's it's a, it's a to me it's a real street sound that you hear in rock music and I really dig it so I use that another one that I do quite a bit is I use triplet runs um, so I'll take a couple of notes again Sam and B flat and I'll play three notes on one string Three, I'm in B flat Dorian
Um, and that's something I'll use that again, just kind of something that's coming from, from more of the rock kind of guitar players that I'll put into a jazz fusion context. So all of that's kind of soloing based, but I also like to use some kind of chordal things that I hear in rock music, particularly guys like Steve Vai. If you've checked out Steve, he has a very specific kind of way of playing. Um, one thing I hear in Steve's music a bit is sus2 chords. Um, a sus2 chord is basically if I take a B flat triad, B flat, D and F, and I replace the, the third, which is the D note, I'll replace that with a C. And you have a sus2 chord. Of course you can you can play on versions of it. Right? All over the neck. Those are all in versions as well, of course it'll be wherever you might want, want to play it. But I'll take those voicings and I'll kind of make them more like a jazz context than I'll move. kind of create a different kind of tonality in that way. I'm, I'm kind of moving things around and it's almost like parallel motion, but I'm using sus2 chords to get to it. Uh, one thing I use quite a bit too is legato playing. Um, for me, one of the, the key rock players in this sort of way of playing was Joe Satriani and he really had that kind of thing really happening. Yeah, the <laughs> Now there's some young players around on the scene now, guys like Tom Quayle, who's really, really great at this. If you haven't checked him out, check out his legato playing. It's just super, super clean. Mine's not even remotely as clean as his. Um, and then Michael Dolce too, Australian, great Australian guitar player. If you haven't checked him out, do. He's, he's got some great legato kind of thing going on as well. Uh, this is something I kind of got from John Schofield, but uh, for me, it kind of the first guy I ever really heard do this was Joe Satriani. And um, it just has a different sound to picking every note, say like Mike Stern might do. It's completely, completely different to... And you, um, you know, I'll play whole phrases like that. And it gets this more slinky kind of feel about it is the only way I kind of can describe it. But um, that's a really useful thing to put into your playing as well. So one thing I do like to borrow from the rock guitar players is the sort of drive sounds they get. <laughs> So that kind of tone isn't a jazz tone at all, but I'll use that in a jazz fusion setting. And what I'm looking for is I want a sound that's kind of got a bit of overdrive, it's a little bit kind of heavy, but also has clarity that you can make out notes and chords. You can hear there I'm changing the middle voice but that's it's still remaining clear you can understand what the chord is so I'll use that kind of sound in a jazz context. For me what I like is I like sounds that are dynamic has a bit of bright has a bit of drive but isn't too drivey that you can't clean it up if you play a little bit lighter or whatever. Another tonal aspect I borrow from the rock guys is, is the use of delay. Um, so I, with that same sound, I'm on bridge pickup on this guitar and I've got that overdrive sound. I've just added a little bit of delay and I often play like this. Now I tap the delay in so it's in time with the music, with whatever I might be playing. And I want this kind of sound. What I'm looking for is, what I'm looking for is three repeats. You only just hear the third one, and that's kind of what I want. And I, it's barely noticeable when I'm playing. Until you stop. And the thing with that sound is it makes your sound project a little bit more and sustain a little bit more. So 
So it's not clattering, it's kind of a, I'd prefer to use that kind of sound over using reverb. To me that's sort of more of a, it's a little more musical. I do use reverb as well, don't get me wrong, but that's something, again, I borrowed from the rock guys, the guys like Satch and Vi and um, those sorts of players. Another sound I borrowed from the rock players, um, I, I remember hearing a track called Black Hole Sun, which was done by um, Soundgarden. And I remember hearing the guitar sound, and that was like a it was like it was played through a Leslie cabinet, and that's something that I like to do. Now I know this is not new in, in jazz or in jazz fusion music. Uh, John Schofield's been doing this for years. Um, if you want to check out Oz Noy, he's someone who has a unique take on how to do this. But this is something again that I borrow from that kind of sound. <laughs> Um, and that's coming from the Fractal AX8, it's just the, the rotary sound that's in there. And, and I like to use it because it's, to me it makes the guitar have a bit more breadth. Instead of being just one kind of sound, now I've got a clean tone as I played you before. I've got an overdrive tone that I showed you, an overdrive sound with delay, and then I've got this kind of rotary sound. It's a kind of interesting kind of tone and um, something again that I that I first heard with was in that tune Black Hole Sun. Now I'm sure it was used before that but that was the first one that came to my attention. So I hope you found that useful. Um, I really like borrowing from other instrumentalists. Um, there's a really great piano player Tigram, you should check him out. He's a guy that I've been listening to a bit lately and trying to steal some of his stuff from. Dude, dude's got some seriously happening stuff in his playing. Um, all kinds of instrumentalists, Guy like, guys like Michael Brecker I find really inspiring, Chris Potter, people like that. So I'm borrowing from other instrumentalists but I'm also borrowing from other styles. Tigram kind of plays a Middle Eastern kind of thing. If you check out the video of him with the um, Berkeley Middle Eastern Fusion Ensemble, it's just fantastic. Those guys are playing their asses off. So you know I want to borrow from those kinds of things, you know it's different phrasing. <laughs> And the thing with rock guitar is it's not anything new. That's kind of been around for a long time. Rock guitar is, um, it's not a new phenomenon. So, you know, why not use those things and put them into your playing? So just to recap, I did, uh, I talked about tone, I talked about bending, I talked about double stops, I talked about um, organ sounds, sus2 chords, using triplets and patterns and all that kind of stuff. So I hope this has been useful. If it has, um, please subscribe to my channel and um, look me up on Instagram. I've been doing a bit more stuff on there. Uh, I'm on Facebook as well, although I kind of maxed out in the numbers on there, so I might have to look at starting a second page or whatever. I've got a music one, so check out Nick Granville Music. I post on there quite a bit. Anyway, keep in touch and um, good luck with your music. Thanks. <laughs>